The police chief also suggested that a group of students could rush an active shooter with their pucks, creating a distraction that would allow someone to get their hands on a shooter's weapon. They will literally tell you to do anything before they suggest letting you have a gun. Hey guys, it's Phil with GOA. Is it possible to go even deeper than the depraved depths of gun control and disarmament? Well, as I recently discovered, yes it is. Even worse than gun control and disarmament is to disarm people and then give them a false sense of security. I wanna keep this episode light because there's just so much to make fun of when it comes to the anti-gun movement. In fact, one of my philosophical and political heroes once said that the best thing we can do to beat the establishment is to just make fun of them because they hate to be made fun of. More than refuting their positions with facts, what hurts the most is to be insulted. So look at this headline. Chicago officials suggests people blow whistles run towards armed thugs to scare off criminals. If you paid for self-defense training and got that advice, you'd probably leave the class and demand your money back. The trainer would get scorched in the reviews. That Chicago official, an alderman, sent out this statement to her constituents. The Whistle Stop program follows these rules. If you find yourself in a suspicious situation or witness a crime, blow your whistle. If you hear a whistle, Call the police, then move toward the source, move toward the source while blowing your own <laughs> whistle. There's no one in this town with a cell phone. Blowing a whistle is only slightly more effective than sending up puffs of smoke to get the attention from the inhabitants of a neighboring mountainside. This alderman's methods of crime prevention are totally detached from reality, but at least she's encouraging people to be sure to get good whistles if they intend to take part in the program. She actually said whistles that can be used in sports or camping safety are the kinds of whistles that we recommend people get. I know when I get my whistle for self-defense, I will make sure it's top tier. Does Noveski even make a whistle? And I know I don't have to bring this up, but a simple search is gonna show you that this alderman is anti-gun. And I mean that literally. She said she's anti-gun. And here it is. In a 2018 interview, she said, I've been a supporter of the anti-gun measures since being alderman. She won't even put lipstick on that pig. There's nothing in her statement here about safety or reasonable gun restriction or the other lies they push. This is what we've been telling you since day one, something we all know. They wanna get rid of the guns. So let's move on to a related story. If you're left defenseless by this Chicago alderman, let's say, would you rather have a whistle or a hockey puck? Defensive hockey pucks were actually proposed by a university way back in 2018, or as I like to call them, the before times. A public school in Rochester Hills near Detroit distributed thousands of hockey pucks as the perfect weapon against an active shooter on campus. They literally cannot bring themselves to recognize the answer here. Hockey pucks! Their politics has slanted their worldview so much it's affected their ability to reason. And it's not even like this idea came from an instance in which somebody actually used a hockey puck to defend themselves. Like, no one squared up and launched a knuckle puck at some bad guy's face. According to the article I found, the distribution of hockey pucks came from an active shooter training session. So here's an interesting line in that article, and it's actually worth thinking about. A participant in the training session said that the Oakland University police chief was asked what items people could use to defend themselves on a campus which has a no weapons policy. Here's what the Oakland University police chief said. Mind you, this is a person whose job is public safety. A hockey puck was a spur of the moment idea that seemed to have some merit to it and it kind of caught on. Ultimately, it seems that the hockey puck scheme was used as a fundraiser to buy better locks for the classrooms. But this was all part of the run, hide, fight method that emphasizes fleeing an active shooter situation, hiding if fleeing isn't an option, and then fighting if hiding isn't an option either. Yeah, that's all fine. I'm not a security expert, but run, hide, fight seems fine with me. But baked into the equation of the run, hide, fight is that you might have to fight. But these people are so dogmatic about their anti-gun positions that they're not actually setting people up for the third part of the method for saving your life. 
the fight. Folks are being given a false sense of security, just like in that stupid plan for people to carry whistles in Chicago. I'm going to read directly from the article quoting the police chief and you decide if this is the worst advice you've ever heard on how to protect yourself. If it's not, let me know in the comments below what the worst advice is you ever got on how to protect yourself in a defensive situation. So here's what the police chief said. If you throw a hockey puck at a gunman, it could probably cause some injury. It would be a distraction, if nothing else. The police chief also suggested that a group of students could rush an active shooter with their pucks, creating a distraction that would allow someone to get their hands on a shooter's weapon. <laughs> he suggested you rush an active shooter holding a hockey puck. Once again, this guy and people like him are so reflexively anti-gun that they're giving advice that will get people killed. That's on them. I mean, it literally reminds me of some of these videos I see on social media where I can't decide if a self-defense trainer is giving bad advice or is just one giant troll. Maybe me and the GOA team can set up a little experiment in the future showing how ridiculous something like this is. Today's video was just to remind us that there are people out there who want to take away our right to self-defense, but no one should ever then assume that they have the intention, as misguided as that may be, to replace it with some kind of collective defense. Not that I want collective defense, but you get my point. No, they're taking away our right to self-defense and they're gonna leave us helpless to criminals and would-be tyrants. So I hope you enjoyed making fun of this alderman and some boneheaded school administrator. It's a good reminder that the anti-gunners are not sending their best. I'll see you next time.